Hey there, and welcome to English for Everyone, where we teach real-life American English. Today, you're going to learn a very important word. Let's get started. First, let's watch a video clip. So in this video, we're going to review the content of five non-native English speakers and content creators, and we're going to give our honest opinions about the English content that's being presented. So let's get started. Let's go on to, what is it? Number four. Excuse me, could you bring me a fork, a knife, and a spoon? Flatware? Flatware, yes. Did you have anything that you uh, thought might be problematic for someone maybe thinking about moving to the United States and uh, learning English? Um, well, I mean, flatware, because actually, I, I, I don't know if somebody said you have flatware. Yeah. Um, now I'm wondering if flatware is actually silverware. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, it's come to the point now that like these things, I, I, I'm just like, wait, or does that mean like pot, like a pan, like, like a pan to cook something? Is that flatware? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, um, yeah, we just wouldn't say this. And um, so do you think if someone, they were in a restaurant in the States and they asked for flatware without any sort of gesturing, would, would, the, would a server know what that meant? Let's say you don't have context. Let's just yeah. say a person's out in the middle of a field and then you ask them, do you have any, or and no, you said cutlery, do yeah. you have any flatware? Yeah. Um, at that point, I might think that this is some sort of tool to maybe dig something or build something like. <laughs> right. Yeah. So potentially problematic for learners. Yeah. Yeah. He's confused. He doesn't know what flatware means. It's not a digging tool. It's not a pan. This is flatware. You can also say, this is silverware. Or, these are utensils. You can also say, this is cutlery. The most common words are silverware and utensils. But Americans do know what flatware is. Not only do they know what it means, they also use this word in everyday English. Oh, excuse me. Where can I find the flatware? Plastic flatware? Uh, how many would you like? Are you looking for a fork? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. I got some flatware. Excuse me, where can I find the flatware? Flatware for... Here's the flatware. Here's the flatware. He knew what it meant. The sign says cutlery. So you can say cutlery or flatware or silverware. You can also say utensils. Oh, look, it's on the package. Flatware set. Flatware? Yeah, like plastic flatware. Um, I think I'll 16. All 16? Yeah. Thank you. And here it is, the flatware. It's a family pack, and it says it right there. Assorted heavy-duty flatware. That's what it's called, flatware, or you can say utensils. These are utensils. It's the same thing. As you can see, Americans know what flatware is. There is nothing wrong with expanding your vocabulary. If you want to master English, there is nothing wrong with knowing this word, because Americans do know what flatware is. Let's watch the next video clip. Flatware, but it's mm -hmm. just, again, not a word that we use. Mm -hmm. Americans do not use this word? This is not correct. It's not true. Because not only do Americans know this word, they also use this word in everyday English. Let's listen to some examples. You okay with the flatware that looks like bamboo? Sure. All right, JB, let's rock some china and some flatware. Does Willie Bank know you're stealing his gold flatware, Neil? This flatware is lovely. Mr. President, 
Have you ever noticed how similar the Van Buren flatware is to the Buchanan flatware? Be on time and go steal the flatware. Yeah. And then I have gold flatware. Y'all know I love gold, so the gold flatware is just... <laughs> Try using plastic flatware and glass cups and plates. These tea sets are porcelain and even the utensils are a special flatware set that was made in East Asia. This is like picnic wear and um, just like plastic flatware and stuff. And I sorted everything into um, like by category. So all the knives are here, all of the forks are here, and then all the spoons are right here. And I put them inside of Ziploc bags so nothing gets dusty when they're away in storage and um, they're just clean next time you use them. As you can see, not only do native speakers know this word, but they also use it in everyday English. Thank you for watching, and if you want to learn English and practice speaking English, subscribe to our channel. Bye. Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today we're here at Ikea in Palo Alto, California, and we're learning some kitchen items. First, what's this? It spins around, but what is it called? It's called a Lazy Susan. That's a funny name, a Lazy Susan. Like the woman's name, Susan, and she's lazy. It's called a Lazy Susan, and it spins around. And what is this? This is called a rolling pin. A rolling pin. Use a long O sound for row, rolling. And the L is between vowels, so it's a light L, l, -l rolling. This is called a rolling pin. And what are these? These are called herbs. Remember, with herbs, the H is silent. Don't say herbs, it's herbs. These are herbs, but they're not real. They're fake, they're plastic herbs. Let's go learn the names of some real herbs. Here we have a list of herbs. We see the silent H, kitchen herbs. The first one is parsley. Pronunciation, parsley. We have this one, it's pronounced thyme. That's right, time. Like what time is it? The pronunciation is time. Use the real T sound, t -t -t time. And this is pronounced chamomile. That's right, the CH makes a K sound, chamomile. The I makes a long E sound like green beans. Again, chamomile, chamomile. This is pronounced chamomile. Mint, easy. Rosemary, easy, and bay leaves. I love to cook with bay leaves. They have a great flavor. And I found some more fake food. Garlic. It's not real. It's fake garlic. And these are called heads. Like my head. These are heads of garlic. Now when you open up the head of garlic, the smaller parts are called cloves. Cloves of garlic. This is not real garlic. This is fake garlic. Kevin, what is this? This is a stove top. Or you can say a stove. And what are these? These are called knobs. Remember, with knobs, you have a silent K at the beginning of the word. These are knobs. One knob, you got five knobs on this stove. Kevin, what are these? These are called grates. Grates. It's spelled differently than great, but it has the same pronunciation. These are grates. Kevin, what are these? These are called burners. One burner, two burners. These are gas burners, not electric burners. These are gas burners. And how many burners does it have? This stove has one, two, three, four, five burners. This stove has five gas burners. It's a good stove. Kevin, what is this? This is the oven. Let's open the oven and see what's inside. Inside the oven, we have two racks. We have a top rack and a bottom rack. So this oven has two racks. Kevin, what are these? These are called tongs. Tongs, T-O-N-G-S, tongs. So remember, tongs are used as a plural. I cannot say this is a tong, I say these are tongs.